RSVP'd. Oh, there we go. And I just sent him a note. So we'll see if that works or not. Um, we were just sharing. Um, so the meeting is being recorded. Uh, Becca, we just each shared a quick tidbit from our week or recent life. So would you like to do that? It's always helpful for me to hear other people's first, but um, <laughs> hmm. I, I um, do consider myself to be a warm weather person, but I have been enjoying the transition to fall the last couple of weeks. So that's been really nice and spending a lot of time outside. So. And you got a little of both. You got some warm while, yeah. while we're transitioning. Yeah. It's been really nice. So. And I doubt we'll be seeing 80 degrees again for a long time. Uh, who would be willing to take some notes? Somebody able to do that? They don't have to be too fancy or all inclusive. I'll try to take some. Great. Thank you. Uh, so what I had down for an agenda was to check in on some of the things we've already been working on probably primarily the school system stuff um, and talk about this uh, summit gathering idea and any other new ideas we want to talk about. And it would probably be good to touch base about um, uh, board positions because I'm a little confused about who's doing what. <laughs> um, so anything else people want to add to the agenda? All right, uh, Lacey or, or Laura, do you want to say a little bit about what's happening with the class at Athens City Schools? Um, I can, unless Lacey wants to start. No? Okay. Okay, so we are in week two of um, a class at Athens High called, um, I don't have it right in front of me, but something like Exploring Equity and anti-racism together. There might be another word in there. I feel like that's not. I think the other word is right. race, race, anti-racism and equity. Gotcha. Yeah. And we have about 16 or 17 students, Athens High and Tri-County students who are um, participating. We're meeting on Zoom. Um, it's a flex credit class. So that means that it's kind of extra in addition to their schedule. And we meet basically during what would otherwise be lunch and kind of a study period. And um, so far, it's going pretty well. We'll have like some sort of topic of the day and we'll do a little thing around that with everybody all together. And then we break into smaller groups to have discussions that are a little bit more personal for the students. They're writing journals. They'll have a couple of reflection papers and they'll have some sort of bigger project by the end of the semester. And um, I think it's going well so far. We've talked a little bit about like cultural identity and we're going to talk about like kind of history of race and racism in the U S and we will talk about microaggressions and implicit bias and have these workshops about communication and listening. We'll talk about being an ally. Um, we'll talk about cultural appropriation and pop culture, all kinds of stuff. Um, and so it's Lacey and John and me and Brandon Thompson and uh, Emmy Jean Francois, who just is in her first year at OU just graduated from Athens last year. Anything you would add, Lacey? Uh, no, you may have said this. I was trying to type notes too, but it's just an extension of what we were already doing over the summer. Just now it's a class as well. So some of the same kids and some new people as well. So it's been yeah. so far putting stuff together and they're very engaged. So that's nice. Yeah. Fantastic. You have. In the... Go ahead, Rebecca. I was just going to say it's fantastic. You have 17 kids. That's amazing. I think that's right. Yeah. 16, 17, something like that. 16, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. And they'll be able to, um, you know, we created a system for them to keep track of how many hours they're putting into the class. And if they meet their kind of um, basic agenda that we have set out and they accomplish a certain number of hours, they can earn a credit for social studies. Yeah. Well, technically a half credit, but like the value of a class, you know what I mean? Yeah. Half credit for a semester. Yeah. And yeah, there are more expectations of them in terms of doing some some work than there were over the summer where they could yeah. just show up and discuss. Um, and it's, it is going to be pass fail and 
I would, I think we're all assuming somebody would have to really blow it off to fail, but you know, we'll see. Um, yeah. And I mean, the kids who've signed up for it are not the kind of kids who are there to blow it off, you know, like they're right. this on cause they're interested and want to learn and want to do stuff. Want to make Yeah. Change. Several of them made it clear they'd be happy to do it, even if it was not for credit, but yeah. we thought it was a, important to have that um, commitment from the school system. Yeah. We're, we're also putting some money into Vanessa it. Vanessa says that's amazing. And Vanessa, if you want to do anything with the class, you'd be more than welcome to like join us for a week, lead a conversation, whatever. Like we have kind of a rough agenda s- scheduled out, but um, it's, it's very rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we absolutely would welcome you and your expertise. If you wanted to do that, you just let John know or me or Lacey. Mm-hmm. Anybody. Yeah, and getting an international perspective would be particularly interesting because we don't have that yet. I'm happy to help whatever you want me to. Okay. Thank cool. you. But that's great. That's amazing. And the, the uh, Chad Springer, the principal, and um, uh, Tom Gibbs, the superintendent, have been pretty darn helpful and cooperative um, for the most part. And and, you know, it takes a little bit of a stretch on their part uh, because none of us are employed by the school system and none of us are certified teachers, but um, they're, they're making it work on their end. So it's pretty cool. Although um, we the, all can teach <laughs> in our own way. Right? Yeah. John yeah. yeah. has years as a teacher. I'm a teacher. Lacey teaches and mentors in a variety of capacities. So, yeah, I think same we, here. Yeah. We, yeah. We're doing all right. We, know, <laughs> we do know a little something about teaching. <laughs> yeah. But the infrastructure is tricky, right? Because we don't have access to whatever, you know, learning model systems that they have at the school. And so we're just trying to, like, that kind of stuff has been a little bit like, oh, yeah. we can pick that up as we go. But, The other school system piece is, uh, so we did all the book clubs and the discussion group over the summer. And I think people know we had six different book clubs going. um, And there was a lot of interest in some way of continuing. And we thought it did not make sense to try to have any expectations about that during the first month of the school year because teachers pretty swamped and they may still be pretty swamped, but it's probably time for us to put something back out there again about, uh, Hey, if you're interested. Um, And I think there's, you know, so there's a couple decisions to make about how frequently, you know, I had wondered about whether we should meet a little less frequently. I think Brandon was lobbying for it should still be every week. Um, and I, I don't really know what's going to work the best for the people who want to be in it. Uh, we could both have a, a group for people who want to continue and we could have something for people who didn't get to do it over the summer and we could have a community component. So if anybody wants to help think about that part with me and help get that off the ground, um, I'd be delighted (laughs) to have the help and the, and the push to get that going. Is there um, much of a sense, John, that these could become something that are more self-sustaining without you or kind of our group needing to lead them? Like now we've yeah. had teachers go through this for a summer. Are, are they able to kind of self-organize to some extent or m- maybe not yet, but is that the goal? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that is the goal. And I think the goal would be for us to gradually – uh, do less. Yeah. Um, but I also think without us doing something, nothing will happen. Right. They're not there yet. You know, people are interested, but nobody's pounding my door down saying, Hey John, what's happening with the book clubs? Cause they're just, you know, they've got all their own life going on. So, right. um, I think it till will still will take the initiative from us and probably a bit more than that, but probably not as intensively as we did it over the summer. It's my sense and i think you're right long term it could be completely self-sustaining with people who who have already gone through it yeah taking leadership to do it again Uh, is that something you have any bandwidth for becca i know you had been interested in helping to facilitate and then that never really transpired 
Yeah, um, I'd be, yes, I'd be interested in helping. Great. Well, maybe we, you and I can talk about that yeah, next sure. week. Mm -hmm. um, and anybody else, jump in. Um, Ramey, I don't know if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in or. I just wrote myself a note to check with you after the over the next week and see where Great. we might be. Great. I appreciate see what that. Is, see what's involved a little more. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. I think you'd really like it, Ray. Yeah. 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 Um, I have a question. Is this is a book club? Who is it for? Who is in the book club? I mean, I've we missed. did uh, six book clubs and it was 50 some people by the end um, who were participating in addition to uh, were there nine of us facilitating? No, maybe six of us who were facilitating book clubs because some of you were, were doing the discussion groups completely. Um, and it w the primary focus was Athens school system teachers and employees. So I think it was 28 teachers and uh, two, the principal and the vice principal from the high school. And then there were four uh, <clears throat> people from uh, Alexander schools who heard about it and said, hey, what about us? Uh, so they participated and there were then however many, another 20 some who were community people. So the Athens Area Mediation Service uh, kind of administered the grant from the schools to do the school system people and uh, the Athens Friends Meeting also gave the Mediation Service a grant to help run the book clubs for um, and pay the facilitators for the community people who were involved. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. It's a good question. So, you know, and particularly with the community people, I didn't put the word out that broadly, partly thinking, you know, if we get 100 people wanting to do it, which I think we could have, um, you know, we wouldn't know what to do with them. <laughs> so <laughs> it was more of a limited ask for the uh, community people. But I think there's probably lots of folks that we could get involved if we chose to. Um, and and people maybe know that book we read was by Jason Reynolds and April Max Kendi called Stamped, kind of a shorter version of his longer book, Stamped from the Beginning. Um, John, yeah, I'd be interested in helping too, um, particularly getting UCM involved potentially as well. Um, we've also got two interns who might be interested as well if we need more people. Great. The library system might be interested in that. We've worked with them around some book club things around substance use disorder. So yeah, we can um, talk about actually, that. The library staff was one of the groups that I put out. I, I invited people from uh, rural action and from friends meeting and from mediation service and uh, from and the library and maybe a couple of others. And um, the library folks, actually nobody signed up, which surprised me some, but you know, busy people. Um, I'm also starting a book club with the work that I'm doing with the Being Black in College group. So maybe in the future, we could all read a book together and collaborate. That would be fun. Session together. Yeah. What what group are you doing it with? It's the Being Black in College um, program that I work on. I coordinate for OMSA. So we are starting a new book club, hopefully next week. Cool. Yeah. And our book club, I mean, we should say part of it was an excuse to get together and talk about uh, race and anti-racism. We did talk about the books, but we read one book over a period of eight weeks that was a pretty easy read, um, and there was lots to talk about. And actually, the whole project kind of started before the murder of um, George Floyd. So, um, you know, that certainly provided some impetus for what we were doing, it created more interest, I think. Um, oh, so the other... Uh, project that we were loosely involved with um, was the Confederate flag thing. And that's pretty much on hold until after the election. The group that's working on it 
um, wanted to take a more aggressive stance at the last uh, county fair board meeting at the beginning of September. And um, I wrote in and <laughs> said, well, I'm not really on board with doing it this way. I think we've been making some progress with, um, you know, taking a slower approach and meeting with a few of them in small groups and things like that. But they kind of wanted to go to the board meeting and demand action and read a letter um, from Ada a Adams um, that was, you know, very challenging to them. And so they pretty much said, nah. Um, doesn't mean more won't happen. And there's certainly interest in getting people who sponsor the fair to begin to put pressure on them. And if nothing has happened by next September or next August, there may be, a, you know, a necessity to or a, an interest in demonstrating boycotting something, something. Mm -hmm. um, so they're certainly on the wrong side of history with this, but. They they are currently not budging. So that's what I know sure. about that. And, I think and it's basically the group said, we're work. not going to do anything more about this until after the election. Because it's a lot of people who are involved in electoral politics. I've heard a lot on this side of the argument. Could you share just briefly? I know it's may or may not be, we may or may not have time for it, but like what the their side, their the um Kind of like what their side of is, is not wanting to back down from the sales and well their perspective i guess roxanne uh croft do people know roxanne she used to be a county commissioner so she's been an activist you know particularly around uh, coal mining stuff and environmental things but lots of things so she looked up political affiliations and of the people on the board there were a couple where you couldn't tell there were like two who were registered Democrats, a few independents and like nine Republicans. Um, so there's that, <laughs> that's part of it. They're, they're, you know, we're assuming from comments they've made, they're people who are probably voting for the current president. Um, who's, you know, where the, this territory has been staked out that, you know, we're, we're going to, to try to make, we're not, we don't want to make Confederate flags illegal. We want to make um, studying anti-racism <laughs> illegal, you know, so um, there's that. What they've said is, in private conversations, um, there was one time, there was one meeting that Roxanne and I and Ann Moneypenny went to with three of the leadership, one person who was the current chair and a couple of other people. And what they said was they were kind of in favor it, but they didn't think them membership would go for it and some of that might have been bullshit but there was i think some of that that they they didn't want to buck the trend or be the one to take a stand that might be unpopular and so part of it as i think they're saying they don't want politics to be part of the fair but mm -hmm. you know <laughs> but it, it has largely become, is based it has in politics part of this, you know um they did they actually did agree in that private meeting that they would make sure that no flags were sold at the fair this year. But then there was no fair. So mm -hmm. they kind of. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the uh, part of the issue, and I don't know how much this is um, kind of talked about with the fair board in particular, but part of the issue with the flag is that um, groups have connected to it as having this other set of meanings that's not about history. It's more about just being a rebel and, and being sort of anti-government and having pride in your own sort of self and your community and your, you know, all these sort of other meanings that are pretty limited when you think about what the flag actually represents and the connection to, um, yeah. you know, the Confederacy and all of that stuff. But so I think that you know, there's this kind of con contestation of meaning. And then there's also, of course, the like, who are these outsiders who think they're smarter than we are, who can just come in and push us around and tell us what to do with our fare, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that, it, you know, the Southern heritage thing. Yeah. And uh, I mean, one guy, one guy sat there at the meeting and said, I don't remember seeing any of you at the fair. <laughs> There's 10,000 people who come to the fair and yeah. lots of us have had 
you know, history with the fair, including people who've been on the fair board and people who have young people who are, you know, show animals and, you know, all that. But they want us, they want to see us as, um, you know, university outsiders who who don't know anything about the fair. So I think that they probably, like, reject the argument that it's about racism. Oh, absolutely. They say this is not about racism. This is about people from the outside coming in and telling us what we can do about our Mm -hmm. pride and our heritage and our symbols. Yeah. And how dare you come in here and boss us around? Literally, we hear, I don't have a racist bone in my body. And we hear, I have a thousand black friends. That's what one person said. And none of them are bothered. None of them are bothered. (laughs) So... You know, obviously, I mean, it's like totally different um, perspective on how the world works and how organizations should make decisions and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think that there's what's that? I'm I'm sorry. I feel like I keep interrupting. I'm sorry. That's fine. Me too. I was just going to say, I mean, you know, that is something that I mean, the community has struggled with for a long time is feeling like people are coming in and telling them what to do. And you know, this is something that I mean, I think certainly should be avoided, you know, in this context. I mean, but it's certainly not just around this around a lot of things, right. Where community members have felt, um, you know, exploited and intruded on. And, you know, when you look at some of the history, I understand why. Um, So I do think that's something for, I mean, this is not an effort I've been involved with personally, but I do think that um, that's something that needs to be considered as that project moves forward. Um, Absolutely. Certainly. I, I, I think our group had done a pretty good job of trying to emphasize, you know, the people who would be the spokespeople were the people who had, you know, I have a 17 year old who shows, you know, animals at the fair every year and I don't want them to be, you know, around this. And I, I'm a fair board member from another and, Um, You know, we've tried to recognize that it's complicated and not accuse them of being racist and, um, you know, just say it's a complex issue. And given all the things that are happening, we don't think this is, you know, that we think this is something you should think about. Um, Some people have really tried to emphasize the economic issues that it's that it's impacting the fair already in terms of who's coming. So I think we you know, I liked the strategy that we had, and then I think people got to feeling kind of desperate, you know, <laughs> about good. we need to get this changed. And so the last meeting, I think we, uh, the strategy was in, was not workable and looked more like <laughs> what we didn't want it to look like. But So we'll see what, what we can do in terms of picking up the pieces from that. Thank you for sharing that perspective. That yeah, was, I really was a helpful. fair amount of awareness and attempt to do it along with people feeling pretty angry about the stupid Confederate flag, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, are the, uh, are there the, the, the primary thing I wanted to talk about around new business and there may be other things that y'all want to bring up, but it's this idea of having some kind of, uh, and I still don't have a better thing to call it, but a, uh, a gathering for um, individuals and organizations who have, are making a serious commitment to um, anti-racism work in Athens and presumably be on Zoom and be set up so that uh, it would primarily be a space where people could make connections. And you know, so things don't get too siloed and they certainly do between the university and the community, but they do in other ways too. So, you know, I think we all keep hearing about things that we didn't know anything about, you know, (laughs) that somebody else is doing, which is great, but, you know, let's keep trying to connect people. So I have felt like that's a need and the friends committee has put some money into help making that happen. So so one, let's talk about that. Two, are there other projects that people want to talk about? Um, are there other kinds of food for thought or other things that we want to try to organize that probably are still going to be on Zoom for a while? One of the recent issues, if you've uh, paid attention to the discussions at the council, is arts and parks and recreation and the fact that Arts West closed and hasn't been able to be opened yet. Yeah. There's a lot of 
angst about the arts and the way in which the arts has been treated or prioritized in the context of the pandemic. And I don't know to what degree this group might be able to facilitate a conversation because we're not arts related. In other words, we don't have an identity with the arts. So we might be perceived as a more neutral party Mm -hmm. bringing people together to at least vent, if nothing else, their frustrations with respect to what the city is or is not doing or has or has not been able to do. The auditor's position is, quite frankly, we have no money. It's not very transparent as a statement, but (laughs) she's pretty clear on the fact that we have to wait until we've got some revenue possibilities in a different kind of environment Mm. for that building to be open. Her comment was, it's not like we can just walk in, open a door and turn on the lights Mm -hmm. and suddenly have events. Yeah. Because it takes money to keep the, the building open, if nothing else. And the same thing is true with the uh, community center in terms of funding issues mm-hmm. related to that. That's just one thought. No, that's a good thought. Do, do people know about what Brandon Thompson has been proposing? Um, he, he, so he's part of the, the team that's working on the class and the book clubs and all that stuff. And he's been proposing that perhaps there should be a whole new department created um, that would include um, culture, anti-racism efforts, and arts mm-hmm. in, as, a, as a thing. And that, you know, arts has always gotten the short end of being parks and recreation and yeah. that if there were a whole new department uh, created, mm-hmm. that that might be a, a smart thing to do. Arts and, and he said that the mayor at least responded positively to that idea. Mm-hmm. So I know he's attending meetings, but I don't know what's... You can be the first director, John. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> With just one of your other hats. That's right. Yeah. I'll be glad to vote for you, though. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I nominate, I nominate Brandon. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Totally. Um, I know other folks have, have uh, thoughts about that in general or ways that we might try to get involved in that. It's a... Uh... To the previous point, if it's something that community members are feeling the need to express themselves around, I think it's part of our responsibility then maybe to hold some type of convening or discussion Mm -hmm. around it. And like you said, just to, if nothing else, just to hear the concerns and um, report back to the administration Mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. After the election. (laughs) Indeed. What do you think, Lacey? We may be too depressed after the election to do anything, unfortunately. No, no, no. (laughs) Please not. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I I promise to not be too depressed after the election. (laughs) Thank you. I'm not sure. There are lots of other emotions that are on the table, but I I can't do depressed. So, something else. We would be celebrating and getting to work to make changes with a new administration or uh, planning that caravan to Canada. Yes. <laughs> yes. Lacey, anything about the arts idea? Um, I guess I, I don't know enough about the whole situation in terms of like the um, – if funding is the primary reason, sort of understanding why that is the case. Um, because I mean, from, I, I know nothing about in terms of how much it costs to keep arts West operating, but it does seem to me, you know, at least non pandemic to be a pretty hop in place most of the time. So I'm yeah. not quite sure if it's just a, they're deciding that there are better uses for the funds or what exactly the, issues surrounding that is or if it is like that current pandemic in terms of the necessity. Yeah. Yeah. So to be clarified you know, we, in some way. Yeah. We regularly, you know, normally would be using Arts West for Prism. 
um, you know, for UCM, that's where we had our fundraiser the last couple of years and things like that. So like, you know, it's a space that I use relatively, you know, frequently for those types of things. So for, you know, for me, it's an important space to have beyond the arts focus too, but um, I guess I don't feel why well, I think it's important to have, I don't necessarily understand sort of the, all the reasons behind why it's not thriving or not getting the attention that yeah. other people think it is as well. Yeah. They're moving, they're working with the mayor is very positive about trying to get things moving. And the director is working right now to try to figure out how best to go forward. The mayor is also trying to get better bandwidth into that building because apparently it's not even really set up well for a location in terms of running a Zoom meeting mm -hmm. to there or out of there. Vanessa, anything you want to add? Um, I guess it's a little new to me, so I'm not too sure, but I think it's a great idea if it does come come together. So I would yeah. definitely like to learn more about it. Seems like maybe a step would be for one of us to talk to Brandon and see where he's at. Um, yeah, I think he has a, you know, he has the pulse of what's going on and who's. I, is there even an arts commission? I don't think there is an arts commission. Is there, or is there? Yeah, there's a parts and well, there's a parts and recreation group that uh, Beth Cloudfelter is part of. Mm -hmm. I could check with her just to see where she thinks the issues are. Yeah, and, and if there's a role for us to play or not. Yeah, I, and and if there was, as, as Becca said, yeah. it might be just to provide a place where people could come and, and have a conversation about it. Great. Well, what do people think about the uh, the need for or of the uh, or benefit in bringing groups together to work on you know to meet and say yeah we're we're all committed to doing this and share what we're doing and do, use it as a networking opportunity the summit kind of thing. I think it's an excellent idea. It's going to take some coordination at some point in terms of who the various leaders are that would come together and yeah i had at least the beginning yeah. list that i can share on the screen but i wanted to see if 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 people are on board with this as a, a thing for the commission to help take on or or what i think it's a good idea we've it's been something that has been sort of in the background for us for a long time yeah something that like we talk about it and then we kind of get and doing other stuff, but it pops right. I think these kind of conversations are always really um, useful and a good use of time. Um, I know even for, I, I think for a lot of people would be helpful to know what exactly is happening. You know, there are a lot of different groups and a lot of different initiatives. And so it would be great mm -hmm. to have everyone in the same room, even just to have, you know, gain an awareness of the efforts that are happening and possibly identify gaps and what else can be done. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great idea. And I think it makes sense for, for this group to be involved in at least the convening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ideally, we have some sort of like, way to capture what we learn so that there is like a database or a list of organizations or something like that. So the folks afterwards want to go and, um, you know, like, wait, who was it? Who was doing so-and-so? Yeah. I, I would think at a minimum we would create a roster and contact information for everybody, but yeah. there might be some deeper harvesting that they could happen there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good idea as well. I have a question though. Would it be a session where we're coming to share our ideas and like, you know, what we're all doing in our different committees or would there be a time where we would all sit down and have like, not even a training session, but then a time where we'd all go through, like talk about a specific topic. Like, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I think that's a question is exactly what would how that would look. I guess I was assuming it would primarily be a chance for people to get together. Um, you know, we'd spend a little bit of time together and then we'd go off in small groups and then come back together and go off in small groups so that people could uh, connect and uh, that we'd have some kind of guiding questions for the small groups 
but obviously part of it is what are you doing? What are you learning? What do you, what do you need? Um, <clears throat> where would collaborations help you do what you're trying to do? Um, I think, you know, sometimes there have been this kind of thing. I don't know if others att ever attended, but the Athens Foundation did a kind of leadership things where different nonprofits would come together. And um, it can be a little bit deadly boring <laughs> if it's just a whole series of organizations giving a report on what they do. Mm -hmm. um, so I think obviously a little bit of that would be good, but <laughs> I think uh, I'm not sure it would accomplish much if that's all it is. Mm -hmm. I think if we centered a question and then asked each group, how do you relate to this question? Mm -hmm. uh, that would that would at least center the report around a central theme or a central uh, yeah. idea. Yeah. And that would be a little better than everybody just saying, well, this is what we do or what we haven't done. Mm -hmm. uh, it may lead to some other questions about what else do you do? But yeah. then it's generated because of interest in, mm -hmm. as opposed to just a straightforward report. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. I can show you the list that I had made, um, you know, just kind of off the top of my head. And so there are several different categories. Yeah. And... Um, the ones that are highlighted in lime green are the ones that I thought were being particularly active or, and intentional in working against uh, racism. So I put us on there yeah. and the Athens city schools and the foundation, but you know, this is just one person's picture. So there may be uh, uh, lots that I'm missing. So uh, just to go through the list, then the other ones that are highlighted under nonprofits mm -hmm. and some others that are religious organizations. Seems like UCM and maybe to a lesser extent, Christ Lutheran are the ones that I'm aware of that are having a focus there. And then some university departments, and that's probably where I have the least information. Like I don't have Amsar on there, and maybe I should, for example. Well, we'd, we would still be on the DNI, so you yeah, have that in a way. Okay. See, I didn't even know that that that's part of the organization. That, mm -hmm. that, that that's how it's organized. So you're you're an arm of the DNI. Yes, we are. Thing. Yeah. The um. College of Communication has a diversity, inclusion, and social justice committee. Mm -hmm. So that would be kind of at the same level as the patent school. Okay. For College of Health Sciences. So I don't know if we want to draw the line around that somewhere. Or if everyone, you know, I, I, I think it could be, I think we want to make sure it's not overwhelmed by university people. Yeah. Um, and then to your question down here that says, um, should we include individuals not affiliated? I would vote yes to that. There are, I think, community members that would make sense. It would be um, really valuable to have be part of the conversation, even, even if they're not attached to an organization. So, yeah. I, I tend to think so as well. Um, probably a lot of the individuals are actually affiliated with one or another of, of these things. But if there are some other people who aren't, I think it might be wise to include them. Also, you mentioned other area churches. I want to just add my church, Athens Seventh-day Adventist Church. You may be interested. Okay, which one, which church is it? Seventh-day Adventist? Seventh-day Adventist, yes. Yeah, that's great. Obviously, part of the trick is how do we get the people who are um, really committed and uh, not just have a, you know, not just have a list of everybody we can think of <laughs> and have, you know, have it be so huge that it's really not, not 
meaningful anymore. I think it's and, especially you know, challenging. So far, what some organizations have figured out to do is make a nice public statement, but they actually aren't doing much of anything yet. I mean, maybe reaching out to some folks who are active in um, some of these or other organizations could form like a like a planning group or something that reaches out past our commission and has some representatives from other things to see what would be useful, what would bring people in from your organization. Mm -hmm. Not a huge, I mean, not like 30 people or something, but maybe, I don't know, seven or eight folks. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. So I guess my other question it would be, are there people, uh, any of us who particularly want to say, yeah, count me in, uh, not to attend, but to be part of that planning. And I recognize, I mean, it's fine if that doesn't make sense for people, given everything else that we're doing. I mean, in an ideal world, yes. <laughs> in the world that I'm living in right now, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, you know, that's fine if, if our role is, you know, the role for a, a number of us as individual members of the commission is to, is to do what we're doing yeah. in, in commission meetings and communication. <laughs> that can certainly contribute to it. The other question I had, so if you if you think of people, and maybe this would be something for email and I can send one out, I can send this list out. So if you think of other organizations we ought to include, let me know. And if you think of people that you think might be really good to get into the planning part of it, uh, let me know about that too. Mm -hmm. But I can send out an email asking specifically for that kind of input. <laughs> When did you want to do this or when had you discussed doing this? A uh, note from Rachel saying she got stuck in another meeting and apologizing for not getting here. Um, I was imagining either December or January. Um, if it was early December, there may not be quite as much going on. Um, I know the university will not be meeting right after Thanksgiving, the university's not meeting. Um, but because we'd be doing it on Zoom, we could certainly still include the university people and even include some student organizations, um, even if they're not on campus. Or we could wait and try to do it in January if that seemed smarter. <laughs> so people I think, have. I think the beginning of December would be okay. Mm hmm. It's still over two months, so it's still some time. But if we if we can get a, a planning group pulled together fairly soon, that might do the help do the trick. I know cool. that, um, well, that, that the Athens County Foundation Art of Hosting Group is trying to do um, like a series of training sessions that are for art of hosting facilitation dialogue stuff related to race and uh, racial equity and anti-racism and that would be probably starting in january so it'd be mm -hmm. once a month in here for march and april holding yeah. out hope they might be able to do something outside or like face to face in april together yeah. um but it seems like this would be not exactly the same group of people, but there would be some overlap. There'd probably be a lot of overlap, but a different ag agenda for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things we don't want to try to compete with, you know. <laughs> and, oh, I can't go to the Racial Equity Coalition meeting or the commission meeting or the Art of Hosting meeting because right. of this other thing. And right. I'd rather not put people put in that position, but also good there are a lot of things going on well that's really helpful input i will send out something to you asking for any input ideas about uh, people to be on a planning group and uh, we'll go from there that's good Bruce. 
I don't know Dwayne Bruce. Okay. I made a recommendation about the planning group in the chat. Dwayne Bruce? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's close with uh, Marlena, so she could reach out to him on our behalf. If she's Great. still involved in the commission, right? We just the timing hasn't worked for her to come to meetings. Yeah, I haven't had much communication from her, so I don't know what's what's up with her about the last couple. Yeah, I don't really either, but I, anyway, <laughs> they're yeah, friends. Whatever there is, it's <laughs> enthusiastic. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Anything else people want to throw into the pot? Can, uh, can I assume that we are uh, happy with the, uh, the minutes from the, previ the previous meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> if somebody reviews our meeting for how closely we've followed Robert's rules of order, they may be disappointed. And if somebody wants to yell at us about that, I guess they will. But um, I will consider them so approved. And, um, you know, the thing, so one thing, and uh, I don't know if there's time, there probably isn't time to do anything meaningful about it today. Um, but it would be useful. I think I'm the only person who's officially an officer, as far as I know, <laughs> being the chair. So it would be useful if people would take on the uh, treasury and the uh, secretary and the co-chair roles, which don't have to be taxing or difficult, but it'd be useful to have some people taking on those spots. So. And you want to do it all? You don't want to do all the things? I'm not doing all the things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other things are not getting done. <laughs> um, so think about that and, and maybe I'll put out, so we can put out some more specific proposals for our next meeting, which might be when. Do we like this time and day as a general rule and should we plan to stick with it for our next meeting? Works for me anyway, but then I'm retired. That does help Normally, in a number uh, of ways, doesn't it? Five. What, Lacey? Normally I will have a client at five, so it's not ideal. Usually I'll have to leave early. Uh huh. Today's mm -hmm. what the twenty ninth. So if we did the last Tuesday in October, does it ruin anybody's life if we started at three thirty? So it would be easier on Lacey. Yeah. Why don't that's we fine. Plan? Early earlier in the day would be better for me, actually. Oh really? So. That's fine with me. Um, well, let's propose that and I'll specifically trying to get input from the people who aren't here about what works. Are you talking about one o'clock or what kind of earlier works for you that works for others? Who, does one o'clock work for everybody? Mm -hmm. What about you, Lacey? On Tuesdays in general? On the last Tuesdays of the month. Yeah, Tuesdays tend to be pretty flexible for me so far Vanessa you're nodding Lacey your schedule is a little more complicated I know sometimes um yeah I guess one works it's relatively wait say is it yeah that works yeah is, I was thinking is class. 130 or two better or no I was just thinking that's we're having our um, meetings about the class from 11 to 12 but that's fine okay yeah. that still gives us an hour in between yeah. Okay. Well, let's assume it's one o'clock on Tuesday, the last Tuesday of the month. And um, I'll figure out if that's going to work for the rest of the crew. Cool. <laughs> yeah. If that ends up not working consistently for like other members of our group, we should revisit. I think, sure. yeah, I think we, and it's altogether likely what well, that might happen, but at least we've got a starting point. Yeah. So I'll try to get that figured out pretty quickly. So, mm -hmm. all right, lovely everybody. Um, Lacey, if you can send me the minutes, I'll get them sent on to the appropriate city folk. Or city. send all of us the minutes, obviously. But yeah. Thank you, everyone.
Thanks for all you do. Pleasure. Thank you. Good to see yeah, you all thank again. you so much. Yeah, great have to see us. you all. Yeah. Bye. Have, have lovely Bye. evenings. Thanks. <laughs>